Today we're visiting Alaska's number one tourist destination, home to the highest peak in North America. Located at the heart of the Alaska Range, today we're visiting the Nali National Park and Preserve. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. A new adventure begins. Today we're going to the Nali National Park. It is 130 miles, about two and a half hours from Fairbanks to the Nali National Park. And in order to really see the park, you either have to take a shuttle bus or reserve a guided tour and we've done the latter. Now 70% of people who visit the park never get to see the mountain, but I'm feeling lucky today. In fact, I believe that's it. Could it be possible we get to see the Nali before even entering the park? Okay, everybody, that's it. Thank you for watching. See you on the road, on to our next destination. I am kidding, of course. I am sure there's a lot more to see besides the mountain, right? Wildlife, rivers, lakes, perilous drives. Let's see what the Nali has in store for us. By the way, this is what I'm going to call the beginning of the touristy part of Alaska, because this is where we start seeing buses from all the cruise lines, and not only buses, rail cars, and even resorts. This is the village right outside the entrance to the park with several hotels, shops, restaurants and the Denali Rainbow Village RV Park, where we're staying today actually. But first, we have a reservation for the Tundra Wilderness Tour, so let's do that first. Before we continue, this video is brought to you by our longtime sponsor, Surfshark VPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and this is an essential tool if you're going to connect to that potentially insecure Wi-Fi at the campground, hotel, coffee shop, restaurant. It creates a private, secure, encrypted connection for your eyes only between your devices and the internet. And that's essential because, you know, there could be a bad actor, you know, eavesdropping on that connection stealing your passwords, your identity, that could be a very bad day. And it is very simple, it's just an app on your phone or your computer, mobile, even streaming devices. And um, it's very simple, just quick connect here and, uh, and within seconds you are secure, you are connected uh, to, to a private secure connection. And that's its main feature, its basic feature, but it's got other features, uh, like for example, maybe, you know, especially now in, in this trip, we, we had to drive through Canada and you know, the internet is no longer the same in every single country. Sometimes once you cross that border, your phone, your computer connects to a, to a local server and all of a sudden a certain content may not be available at your current location. And it's very simple. Surfshark allows you to connect to a server. They have servers all over the world. So let's say, uh, Let's, let's pick a country here. We, we, we can even connect to Myanmar, you know, that's on the other side of the world. And within seconds, you are, as far as the internet is concerned, you're in Myanmar. How cool is that? It's got other features. It's got clean web that gets rid of unwanted ads and potentially malware. It has a true incognito search for your eyes only. And that's very simple. You just open the search. And uh, I'm sorry, my connection here is a little slow, but there you go. You can search for your eyes only. Now I have a very special deal from Surfshark so you can have effortless safety for less. Click the link in the description. That's surfshark.deals slash myrv and you enter promo code myrv at checkout and you'll get 86% off and three months for free. Now let's explore Denali. Here we are at the Denali bus depot. Let's confirm our departure time, get our tickets and wait. 
The green buses are the Hapan Hapaf shuttles. Ours should be beige, like this one coming up. Tundra Wilderness Tour number 16, that's us. A snack box is included in the tour. There's some blue sky out there, but there's also some clouds. This is the direction we're heading. That highway opened up in 1972. Then you could drive between Fairbanks and Anchorage directly. And I just realized we're on the wrong side of the bus. I've seen an animal in 17 and a half years, but they're never there again. Always somewhere else, and even on the best days, never. Yep. We're going west, so the tallest mountains of the Alaska range, including Denali, are to the left. How could I miss that? We are still getting beautiful views, but certainly not the best. All right, pull down the video screens. And the driver has spotted Denali. There's the bus. There's Denali. Can't see the summits right now. They can see the sides. Penny. So all these mountains around us are five, six, seven thousand feet. Right of it. Not that shorter one, but the one that's a little taller and has a little bits of snow on it near the summit. We're heading over that way. These snapped off. Some of them. Uh, you know, I'm gonna roll a little. There are trees. In the way. Here we get our first glimpse at the North Summit, the pointier one. Oh, just the summit snow. Now this summer has been cooler than normal. Oh, We've got wildlife. It's a caribou. Now we're approaching the Savage River, the farthest you can drive on the road on your own. They have a checkpoint, and unless you're staying at one of the campgrounds farther down the road, this is as far as you can go. There are a couple of nice hiking trails, so we might come back. Beautiful mountains. And check it out! So we're gonna go about three or four miles up. I'll let you out, take pictures out, but just in case the clouds develop. Sometimes the animals are so far away that the only way to see them is on the screen. Our driver has a camcorder with a very powerful zoom lens and good eyesight. Here we stop, so that everybody can take photos and selfies. We're officially part of the 30% club! As I mentioned, Denali is the highest peak in North America, with a summit elevation of 20,310 feet, or 6,190 meters, above sea level. Well, that was definitely a very rare view of Denali with no clouds blocking the summit. We continue going west, kind of southwest actually, on the park road. Now crossing the Sanctuary River. Looking the Teklanika River, looking for animals walking up and down. There's a campground right before our bathroom stop. Here we stop at the Teklanika rest stop for a quick bathroom break. It is getting a little cloudier as the day progresses. No, no wildlife, only humans. Unfortunately, this year the road is only open to mile marker 43 because of a landslide. Which is a real bummer because that's less than half of the road. And I have a feeling the best views are going to be in the more remote parts as you get closer to the mountain. Another excuse to return in the future. Now, by the way, crossing the Teklanika River. Here's a historic cabin by 
the entrance to the Igloo Creek Campground. Very remote, only seven tent sites. Now the Igloo Creek looks significantly different than Teklanika River. This is spring fed, there are no headwater glaciers. And in a clear creek like this, there are a few fish, Arctic railing. Little blue gray fish with our large dorsal fins, very few of them, very small. And a creek like this freezes up solid in the winter. Little hook bill. We have reached Sable Pass, almost the end of the road for us today. There's the mountain once again, the south summit, the true summit, immersed in a cloud. They're at the summit now, they're not going to see anything. There's a cloud just encasing the true summit. Here we see some more wildlife, and life not so wild. A lone caribou in the distance. And this is where we turn around, going back through Sable Pass. Unfortunately, on this trip we don't get to see Polychrome Overlook, or anything past that. Patch orange, look in that valley, you can see it's like filled in with black, so that's a dirty glacier, considered a rock glacier. So it's sort of... Um, you know, polychrome where the road is closed, it'd be a real steep gully where it's all coming down all the time. Every year, it's that gully fills up in almost the perfect Y. The left side's going to get a little narrower, yeah. I'm just starting to mention that. I've been watching that snow melt back. It gets to a real nice letter Y. There's the North Summit, peeking from behind the mountains. Here we stopped by a raven's nest. And unfortunately, that's as far as we could go on the road this year. Here we have some spectacular views of the Alaska Range, even though it is getting a little cloudier. Here we have a caribou on the snow, several miles away. All the wildlife, except perhaps for the birds, have been like really, really far away today. And snow is better than anything for them because they can lay down in the coolness of the snow. But if they don't have snow, then they'll lay out in the gravel. Anybody see anything? Looking? I think we've got a Caribou? bear. Front right of the white shrubbery. It's feeding on grasses in the summer. It's grazing like a cow on grasses. Another plant. There it is. Watch as I back off. There's the big picture. Yep. Yeah, he moves head. No, the only one. In the center of the hill, to the right, but you can, is another uh, one. Go by color. Because there are. There's another one. Another right. Farther right in the center of the hill. Out of the brush. Out of the brush. In the center of the hill. Same level. Let's look for the other one. No, but bears are generally solitary unless it's a mother and cubs. Yep. Mating season is usually in May. An awful lot of these bears, uh, their shoulder hump comes up to about my crotch. If I could spread my legs wide enough, they could walk underneath of me. They're very tiny because they eat mostly plants. If this was a coastal brown bear, oh my god, they're huge. They don't uh, get salmon, they hardly eat any protein, they get a moose calf or two, they dig arctic ground squirrels out of their burrows, but most of their diet is plants. I can't see the other one. 
There it is. <laughs> Real light colored one. Yep. I had a boy sit behind out. me a couple years ago and said, Mommy, polar bear, polar bear. <laughs> Platinum blonde, some of them. That's a light one. That's a real light one. We continued the return trip with the spectacular views of the Alaska Range, the Nali ever present for the most part. Another fact about the mountain, as the locals call it, it is the third most prominent and third most isolated peak on Earth, after Mount Everest and Aconcagua. And it is also the tallest mountain in the world from base to peak on land, measuring 18,000 feet or 5,500 meters. Aren't this like the most spectacular views? and they have spotted a dull sheep on the mountain. I'm so glad we get to see them here, even if from very far away, because we didn't get to see them at Adigon Pass on the Dalton a couple of days ago. Once again, crossing the Teklanika River. As you may know, before 2015 Denali was known as Mount McKinley. And now we're going to find out who it was named after. Who's named for? Any guesses? William McKinley. Usually somebody yells out President McKinley and that would be wrong. It was named for Senator William S. McKinley. Well, what do you know? Wikipedia seems to disagree with our guide. It says that in 1896 a gold prospector named it McKinley as political support for then-presidential candidate William McKinley, who became president the following year. The National Park Service website says Mount McKinley emerged after a gold prospector named William Dickey, who was an admirer of President-elect McKinley, used the name in an 1897 New York Sun article. I don't know who's right, I'm just fact-checking here. Hold that thought, I think we got some wildlife. It's like snowshoes. It's a ptarmigan, Alaska's official state bird. One curious fact is that it uses camouflage as protection against predators, changing its plumage from light brown in summer to snow white in winter, and the feathered feet like snowshoes. Anyway, going back to the history, on August 23, 2016, President Barack Obama came to Alaska, he gave a speech where he announced he was changing the name from Mount McKinley back to Denali the original Koyukon word meaning high or tall, and the rest is history. And we're back by the Savage River, and we might climb that rock formation tomorrow. It is called Savage Rock, and from this vantage point, it kind of looks like a face. One can only imagine all the wildlife hiding in plain sight. But even the guide said it, this year it has been weird when it comes to wildlife, being scarce and very far away. At least we get to see the mountain. I guess you can't have it all, can you? And just like that, our tour is over. I really enjoyed that tour, now let's go to our RV park. It's like five miles away. And here we are. I didn't feel like putting the camera on the roof for just five miles, but this is called Denali Rainbow Village. And it's right on the village. So it's a, it's basically a parking lot, but here the, the, the main three words are location, location, location. All these are like restaurants and shops and we're just five miles from from the entrance to the park. So that's perfect. Here the, the hookups are kind of weird because the water and electric are on this side 
and um, I had to use uh, two hoses and an and extension and here the, the sewer is on this side but really forward so I had to, to pull the trailer really really uh, very much forward which is fine uh, we just park uh, the park the car behind it uh, tomorrow when we go somewhere and uh, this is where we're gonna be for the next three nights exploring well we already explored the most we can see of the Nali National Park but there's a lot of other, a lot other stuff to do in the area right now we're just gonna have some dinner and and maybe walk around town a little bit well made some burgers sorry I didn't show you and uh, now we're gonna walk around the village a little bit see what it is like Yeah, very touristy, all kinds of tours and adventures. Yeah, this is where we're staying. Yeah, they have all kinds of souvenir shops. Anything imaginable. We're looking for the L house, actually. And we have reached the end of the main strip. But there is more. Someone recommended Prospector's Pizzeria and Ale House. And we already ate, but we could use an ale. It seems very nice. They even have live music. But there's no room at the bar, so we'll come back tomorrow for dinner. Well, we might do this tomorrow. Today we were more interested in the Ale House part of the name, but the bar was full, so we're gonna go back, rest, and tomorrow we continue exploring not the Denali National Park itself, but the Denali area in, in general. Who needs rest? Let's check out the Denali Princess Wilderness Lodge. I guess this is where the people who came on the cruise ship stay overnight while they visit the National Park. Mm, the Alaska Range. Nice wood carvings here. And Fanny Q Saloon. Let's check it out. Here's a life-size moose to grill us. Ice-cold Husky IPA. Great ambience. A gentleman playing the piano. I think this just became our new favorite place. And it's still daylight outside. As expected. It is Alaska after all. Well, good morning. Let's go back to Denali National Park. Today, the weather not as pristine as yesterday morning, but it doesn't really matter all that much. What are the chances we'll get to see Denali again? What a beautiful view from just outside the village. I know, I said we were not going to go into the park today, but... I changed my mind. Let's stop by the visitor center and then drive the 15 miles we're allowed to drive on the park road. In true National Park fashion, everything is very well executed. And of course, there would have to be a raised relief map of the park. There's the topographical map showing the park road. Unfortunately, this year we will not be able to see the Nali up close. But at least we got to see it, if from afar. Let's walk around the exhibits. Here we have a bull moose, which we haven't been able to see one in real life yet. A brown bear. Is that a wolf I see? 
Okay, this is pretty graphic. Very realistic, I should say. A bit of the human history of the park here. Driving on the park road, here we have a wildlife traffic jam. It's a moose, a cow moose, just grazing there, minding its own business. She's probably thinking, who are all these humans here spoiling my tranquility with their idling engines? All kidding aside, they are magnificent creatures. And I'm sorry it gets a little blurry as I zoom in, some weird refraction with the windshield. Following the tour bus on the park road, going as far as we can, which is not much, at least not as much as we would like. The good part is beyond the Savage River Bridge. And don't get me wrong, the bus is not a bad choice, but it would be good to have the freedom to drive the whole road and stop here and there. It almost feels like an underutilization of the road to be used only by tour buses and shuttles. And I know it would be too crowded if they let everybody through, but how about a lottery system or a timed entry? I don't know, I don't have all the answers, but there's gotta be a better way, right? For the benefit and enjoyment of the people. This is it, we have arrived to the end of the road as far as we're concerned. Let's see if we can find parking. windy today and uh, as you saw uh, parking was insufficient uh, over there by the river but we parked here at the trailhead and we're just gonna walk it's probably less than half a mile and then we'll see if we can do a little hike I see some RVs on the forbidden part of the road and the only ones allowed are those staying at the Tecla Nica campground they must stay for at least three nights and take the shuttle to move around such great views of the Savage River. And we gotta keep our eyes peeled because there could be wildlife hiding in plain sight. It is a pretty clear stream. Perhaps a little dangerous walking on the side of the road here, but it is the way, the only way. Yeah, that's Savage Rock in the Glacial Valley. Yep, we're almost there. And here we are, let's go for a little hike. Never run from a bear. Let's uh, do a little bit of this one. From the summit of the Savage Alpine Trail, which is four miles in total, you're supposed to be able to see the Nali. Great views of the Nali. But today, we're just going to the top of Savage Rock, since we already saw the Nali yesterday. Looking back, there's the bridge to the Forbidden Road. We did this hike back in 2010. I have a feeling like back then, which was probably one of our first hikes ever, this is gonna be a, a very rewarding little hike here. I mean, it's elevation gain is, uh, is serious, but I think to the top it's just like not even a quarter mile. I think this is as far as we're gonna go today.
Let's head back down. It is always more fun on the way down. I think we're going to do the River Loop Trail next. We decided to do a little bit of the River Loop Trail, I believe that's what it's called. It is a very well trafficked trail. As I often say, never forget to look back, sometimes the best views the best views are behind you. It is pretty windy today. We continue, walking along the swift current of the Savage River, along its V-shaped canyon. It is so beautiful out here, with all these exposed rocks. What a rewarding hike! It is beautiful in every direction. We have reached the footbridge and now we're going to return on the other side. It looks brand new. It must have been replaced or restored recently. And now we're going back on the other side of the, of the river here, of the Savage River. And um, yeah, so far very rewarding trail. Uh, supposed to be two miles in total, so we must have done about a mile. The return here a little bit more strenuous, it's a little bit more, more up and down, less maintained, but still not a difficult trail at all. The only thing is so windy. It's, uh, it's a little uncomfortable. It is nice to see everything from a slightly different perspective. Now with the mountains in front of us, we can already see Savage Rock. Let's look all around us. Here's a closer look at Savage Rock. It almost looks completely different from this vantage point. Here's the view from the other side from the forbidden side. And we're about to cross the Savage River once again. Now on the main park road. What have we got here? It's Iptarm again. What a place, well, we did the Savage River uh, uh, Loop Trail, that was very rewarding, a lot of fun now, now we're gonna get something to eat, and then we might do another trail, look, look at the seagull. It is a little bit of an uphill hike getting back to Starship, 
since we couldn't park at the regular parking lot. I mean, the parking lot is ridiculously small. Like, they want to discourage you from driving into the park altogether. Let's go back by the visitor center because there's another trail in that area that we want to do. There seems to be some wildlife. There she is, a cow moose. Well, we're gonna do another trail and this one is called Horseshoe Lake. No pets, no bikes. I think it begins parallel to the railroad track and, and then it's like a loop. Well, yeah, the first few feet of the trail are on the railroad tracks. There's a nice view of the village. Before we go, I want to go to that hilltop hotel. The views must be spectacular. And that's the trail. It would be really interesting if the train came right now. Because we're literally crossing in the tracks. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. There's a little bit of elevation gain in this part, but the real challenge is going to be on the way back. Because first we have to go all the way down to the lake. Just another walk in the woods. Yep. That's Horseshoe Lake down there. By the way, very well trafficked trail here. It's, uh, it's very popular. Down and down we go. Now this is the beginning of the loop. Right here. Push the lake loop, return loop. Let's do it. I can already see the lake. Yep, this is the spot. Let's go see the beaver dam and then we continue that way. Well, that is very cool. Incredible, the ingenuity of the beavers, you know, that they are able to, to create a dam like that. The flowers are blooming everywhere. We are now approaching the roaring Nanana River. We can see the village on the other side of the river.
very, very impressive, the swift current of the river there. Now we continue on the loop trail, which goes very close to the river for, for a little bit here. Yeah, this, they look just like Christmas trees. Like there. You know, the stereotypical Christmas tree. Maybe we should take one home. Uh, some people on the other side. So far, very, very, very rewarding hike just to, to get this close-up view of the, of the river. The lake, mm, so far, uh, up, up until now, the jury is still out. Here's another river access, even a small beach. Very impressive, the sheer power of the water. Impressive, the current of the Nenana River here. And we even have like a, like our own private little beach here. And I forgot to bring my bathing suit, but I did remember to bring my hiking boots. Oh, there's another beaver dam, a smaller one, in this creek emptying into the river. And here's a local resident. This is so beautiful, even on this somewhat gloomy day. Yeah, it is another river dam. What do you know? The sun wants to come out. Oh, there's a train. And I do believe that's the same river dam we saw earlier. Get closer. Here it is from the other side. An engineering marvel. I wouldn't be surprised if we humans learned how to make dams from the beaver. Everywhere you look, it is like a postcard. Fly pelicans or seagulls. We continue. I think it is now that we're getting to the good part. I must confess, earlier I wasn't too impressed with Horseshoe Lake, but I have changed my mind. This part is gorgeous as we walk on this narrow path along the lake. As I mentioned, never forget to look back because sometimes you look at those rocks. Look at that water, it is so clear.
It is a pretty shallow lake too. I'm gonna be honest, at the beginning I wasn't too impressed with the lake, but after this, this loop that goes right on the shore of the, of the lake, I'm like, yeah, impressive. <laughs> now we're getting close to the fun part, or not. We have to climb all the way back up. And this is, the end of the loop. Now for the fun part. <laughs> yeah. It's a steady climb on this it's kind of makeshift, makeshift steps. So far it's not that bad actually. Never forget to look back, but we saw, we saw that on the way down. So. And uh, I almost prefer trails that are up first and down later, because you know, you make the big effort and you get the big reward. Now we got the big reward and now we have to pay afterwards. To think that we were all the way down there. Check out the village, we can see it from here. The RV park is behind all those buildings. Well, that was a great trail, uh, as you saw. Now, for some reason, the National Park Service says that it is four miles, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the brochure. But we have only done a little over two, and all trails said two, a little over two, so all trails was right. We've decided to end our day at Prospector's Pizzeria and Ale House as a reward at the end of a day of hiking. And they have King Crab Pizza. And I've been meaning to try that delicacy. When the bartender told me market price was $98, I almost fell off my stool and I was tempted to say no, but... My pride won, so... Oh, look at that! Wanna see the most expensive pizza ever? Actually, in hindsight, this ended up being the least expensive pound of king crab we found in the whole state of Alaska. And the only time we ate it, too. Well, there you go, the most expensive pizza we ever had, but... I mean, the king crab was good. Next time, we'll just have it without the pizza. And uh, yeah, 98 bucks for a pizza. <laughs> Not exactly what we expected, but when you're traveling, you gotta expect the unexpected. Our adventures in Denali and beyond continue next week. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding in my